South Africa hosts the BRICS conference. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa speaks during the summit about the importance of the summit and encourages all attendees, particularly businesses, to support the organization. Here is his remarks from the conference in Johannesburg, South Africa. Chabalala for the report that he has just given and particularly underline and appreciate the message that is coming from all of you as business leaders about the immense opportunities that you see in investments across the BRICS countries. The BRICS group of countries exists not only to strengthen government-to-government relations, but also to forge stronger ties between the peoples of our five nations. It is for this reason that several bodies have been established since the BRICS was formed to enable cooperation across society, be it in business, be it in political parties, be it in the social sector, and also in the sporting sector. The BRICS Business Council is a vital and vibrant platform for strengthening economic ties between our respective countries and in forging common perspectives on inclusive economic growth and development, as we have heard from the report that has just been tabled by Mr. Chabalala. The changes that have taken place in BRICS economies over the past decade have done much to transform the shape of, glo of the global economy. Together, the BRICS countries make up a quarter of the global economy. They account for a fifth of global trade and are home to more than 40% of the world's population. This agglomeration of these five countries has a major impact on various aspects of the global activity and life. As we celebrate the 15th anniversary of BRICS, trade between BRICS countries totaled some $162 billion last year. Foreign investment has played an important role in the growth of BRICS economies. Total annual foreign direct investment into BRICS countries is four times greater than it was 20 years ago. However, the new wave of protectionism and subsequent impact of unilateral measures that are incompatible with WTO rules undermine the global economic growth and development. We therefore need to reaffirm our position that economic growth must be underpinned by transparency, be compatible with a multilateral trading system that supports a developmental agenda. The type of developmental agenda that the five countries that are members of BRICS have embraced right from the onset. We require a fundamental reform of the global financial institutions so that they can be more agile and responsive to the challenges facing developing economies. In this respect, the new development bank established by BRICS countries in 2015 is leading the way. Since its formation, it has demonstrated its ability to mobilize resources for infrastructure and sustainable development in emerging economies without conditionalities. Earlier before coming into this session, I was speaking to the president of the 
New Development Bank, and she was outlining to me how ready and willing the New Development Bank is in terms of supporting the development agendas of various countries. And we applaud this, and we appreciate this. BRICS economies have emerged as powerful engines of global growth. Yet the rapid economic, technological, social changes underway create new risks for areas such as employment, equality, as well as poverty in many of the BRICS countries. It is quite heartwarming to hear you as business people, as one listened to Mr. Chabalala's report, also focusing on issues such as poverty reduction and elimination and inequality as well. It isn't often that you hear such very positive and forward-looking messages from the business community. So it's wonderful to be in a forum under the ages of BRICS that you as business leaders are in tune with the developmental agenda that needs to be pursued to lift the people who live in BRICS countries and beyond out of the ravages of poverty and inequality. We therefore call on the business community to join hands with us to identify solutions to these and many other challenges affecting our respective economies. From a South African perspective, there is massive untapped potential for investment in our country and indeed on the African continent as well. In recognition of this potential, the theme for this 15th BRICS Summit is BRICS and Africa, part, BRICS and Africa the Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable Development, and Inclusive Multilateralism. Africa is a continent of great opportunity in industrialization process in a variety of sectors. This continent is rich in the critical minerals that will drive business success in the 21st century. The continent has resources of lithium, vanadium, cobalt, platinum, palladium, nickel, copper, rare earth minerals, rhodium, and many others. And these are the minerals that are bound and are driving economic activity across the world. African countries have made it clear that the investors of choice are those who will come and invest in our continent, but also process the resources here close to source so that African countries do not export rock and sand, but export finished products as we would like to do. We are developing stronger regional value chains that will connect a number of African countries, providing investors with diversity, with strength, as well as with resilience. The African continental free trade area creates a single market that is expected to grow to 1.7 billion people and nearly $7 trillion in consumer and business spending by 2030. The success of the African continental free trade area will require a massive investment in infrastructure. We need to mobilize the substantial financing that is needed to build the roads, the ports, the rail, the energy and telecommunications network that will enable industrialization and trade. 
It is also pleasing to hear that you as the business community, you also see this area as opportunities that you can invest in. Growth in African economies will be driven in the main by small and medium enterprises. This requires focused as well as effective support to these businesses. It is important that specific financing be directed also to women-owned businesses so that they can harness the benefits of the continental free trade area. And we in Africa, as we seek to grow and develop, we are focusing on the empowerment of the women of our continent who have been held back through the years of colonialism and in our case through the years of apartheid, through protocols and laws, and we are saying we need to free the women of our continent so that they can trade, so that they can be in business and grow the economies of our various countries. Africa has a young, digitally connected and urbanizing population, a population which provides a stable workforce for companies in the future. The investment in skills development is continuing to grow. These factors all position Africa as the next frontier of productivity and growth. The BRICS countries have an opportunity to contribute to and participate in Africa's growth story. This can be achieved through greater cooperation in areas such as infrastructure, agriculture, manufacturing, new energy, and the digital economy. I was pleased to hear that these are also areas that you as business people are focusing on. South Africa has an important position in growing the African market, facilitated by the Africa continental free trade area and other free trade agreements. South Africa's industrial strength, our mineral endowments and our large market opportunities provides a compelling value proposition for companies wanting to establish their businesses here. South Africa has significant industrial capacity with Africa's most advanced industrial innovation and fabrication base. Firms that have invested here recognize that South Africa has deep local capital markets and strong financial systems. We have a diverse and sophisticated economy, and this country possesses world-class infrastructure, <clears throat> skills, abundant natural resources, industrial clusters, and a host of incentives to support investment. And many investment and partnership opportunities exist in renewable energy, in infrastructure, in aquaculture, in ICT, automotives, pharmaceuticals, and advanced manufacturing, amongst others. It is clear from the report that we have just received that this has been a very productive business forum. And I'd like, as I end, to commend the BRICS Business Council, the respective ministers from the BRICS countries <clears throat> and officials and all business leaders who have made a meaningful contribution for the success of this business uh, forum and to have all of you, almost 1,500, I'm told, to have this, what I see as a very successful business forum. I sincerely hope that your participation in this BRICS Business Forum will yield the productive outcomes that are required for us to catapult BRICS economies towards more equitable and accelerated growth. 
In two hours or so, the BRICS leaders will sit together in a retreat to discuss a number of BRICS-related matters. And one of those is the expansion of BRICS. A number of countries, some of which are represented here, have, are seeking to be part of this BRICS family. And we appreciate that. It goes to show that the BRICS family is growing in its importance, in its stature, and also in its influence in the world. And we will be taking into account